my YouTube friends. If you've ever struggled with getting your audio just right in OBS, you're not alone. Today, we're diving deep into the world of OBS audio settings, unraveling the mysteries of sound and showing you how to fix those pesky audio issues that can ruin the perfect stream. Whether you're dealing with audio sync issues, low volume, or you just wanna enhance your audio quality, I've got you covered. So grab your headphones and let's make your audio sound as crisp and clear as your content deserves. We got a bunch of stuff to get to, so you know what? Let's get to it! Now before we dive super heavily into the advanced audio section, and I know, it's not very sexy, there are probably a lot of you out there thinking, well, there's no hidden secrets here. Let me tell you, more questions come into my channel about just simple, basic audio things and sync problems than anything else, and it's not even close. A large percentage of the comments and questions that I get in the comment section on every video spread across the entire channel has to do with not understanding how the audio works in OBS. So we're going to go over that. Second, and I say this all the time on my live stream, but audio, especially complicated audio with soundboards and all kinds of filters and all that stuff is definitely not my forte. In fact, it's probably the weakest part of my live streaming game. It's not like I can't hear. In fact, I hear quite well. And I basically set up my live streams and my video audio as simple as possible. I buy a really expensive microphone that I know works and gets the kind of audio I need. And I plug it into my camera and that's it. I don't have any filters or any other audio processing on any of the sound that you ever hear on my channel. And most people tell me it sounds pretty good. So the point is you can get great audio without adding any of those things. Now I talked to lots of people who have all kinds of soundboards and filters and everything else and I listen to their audio and it doesn't necessarily sound any better than mine. So why complicate it that much for nearly no results. I can't answer that question. Maybe they have poor audio equipment and they're using all that processing to try to make it sound better. And if that's true, well, that's a noble cause because there's nothing more important than great sounding audio. So I'm certainly going to talk a little bit about how all those filters and everything work because you should definitely understand it. But a very, very, very large portion of the people that watch my content don't even understand the very basics of audio monitoring and audio playback in OBS. So we're going to get into every single detail and probably some ones that you didn't even know about. And right away, when you look down here, you could see that my microphone is peaking and a lot of people don't know that that's not good. Well, you can easily adjust microphone peaking by just turning this little dial down right here. And there we go. Now I'm not going into the red, whether my voice gets super loud or quiet. We keep it in the yellow where it's supposed to be. We don't have to worry about any clipping on the microphone. For those who don't know, clipping is when you speak too loudly for how you have your level set. And a lot of times when you hit that peak, you're going to get clicking and that sort of stuff in your microphone that is annoying for your audience to listen to. So you always want to set your levels to avoid peaking. In other words, we don't want to really get into the red other than maybe a very tiny amount on occasion when you get very excited. But other than that, you can see the level right here is set and that's really where it should be. Now let's switch over here to scene two where I have two audio pieces in here. And you can see that what we want to do is set up our audio source on our media source so it's lower so that I can speak and you can hear me over it, but you can still kind of hear the audio in the background. Let's first cover how you monitor this audio. So we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna go into audio and your audio monitoring device is listed right here. So we can drop this down and select headphones so that we can actually listen to things that are happening on our stream. So my headphones are these right here, the Zone Wireless Plus. 
I'm gonna select that. We're gonna click apply and okay. For those of you who are also wondering how you can change the look of this, you see a lot of people have it vertical. You just right click in the audio monitor and boom, now we have it vertical. They'll all line out. Now you can also take any of the sources in your audio mixer because sometimes you'll have other video clips or something that could be part of transitions or anything like that. They could be all lined up here and most of them you don't need to see. In one of my live streams, I have literally 20 audio monitoring things in here, and I only need like three. So you can right click on any of these items and you can hide them. And that way you can remove audio sources that you do not need to see. Make it a lot cleaner and easier for you to monitor your audio. If you need to get stuff back, you could just unhide all, it will bring them all back. And then of course you're gonna have to go through and hide the ones you don't want again when you're finished. Now each scene could have completely different audio setups, so you're gonna wanna go through each scene and kinda mess around with your levels to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. Now once we do this, we're gonna right click here and we are going to go into Advanced Audio Properties. And the main thing that you're going to find in Advanced Audio Properties is the Audio Monitoring System. Basically, Monitor Off means that the audio for whatever is on the screen here, whatever's in the preview and whatever's down here, is going to go out to the live stream or the recording and you cannot hear it because it's not being monitored. So what we can do is we can drop this down and we can select monitor only, mute output. And this means that you can listen to the monitor in the monitoring device that we set up in settings and hear what's going on, but it's not going to be broadcast or recorded. And then the third choice is monitor and output. And this is where you're going to be able to hear what's going on with this audio device, in this case, the camera, which would be the microphone, plus it's going to go out to the live stream. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but OBS does process the audio, which means that everything that I say, if I'm listening to it, is going to have a slight delay. Believe me when I tell you, it is not comfortable and extremely difficult to have a live stream or produce a recording where you're listening to your own audio on a slight delay. For me, it's impossible. I can't barely get a sentence out without the voice starting to repeat in my head and it just messes everything up. So it's good to go ahead and monitor it at the very beginning when you're setting everything up so you know that your audio is good and then switch your camera to just monitor off because listening to yourself on a slight delay is going to drive you nuts. It's going to make it very difficult for you to concentrate on even what you're trying to say. Now media sources are totally different you might want to listen to a media source so that you could comment on it while you're doing, you know, a stream or a video. So in this case, I might be talking about what's going on over here. I need to be able to hear it. I need to know what the audience is hearing so that I can make comments about it. And that's where this comes in. So basically, those are the three types of audio monitoring and it will always monitor on the device that you set up in settings audio right here. So whatever you have set here is where you're going to be listening to the monitor and output or the monitor only and mute output. Now, why would you have a monitor only mute output? Why would you ever use this? Well, if you have a remote producer that helps with your stream, maybe tells you something you might have missed in chat or whatever through your headphones, something like that, you can set this up so that you can use desktop audio to monitor and you can hear what they're saying in your headphones, but it never shows up on stream. So that might be one reason why you would use monitor and mute output. Now you see over here that we have the ability to set up each of these audio sources on separate tracks. And what that means is that you can record the microphone audio on track one and the media source audio or what's happening on the video behind us on track two if we wanted to. And we can remove all of these other ones so that when you produce a recording from OBS, you actually have two different completely separate tracks that you can edit. Now you can set all of this stuff up in your output recordings right here, 
where you can set up which audio tracks you want your recording to monitor and record. So you can set up which tracks you want to record right here, and then you can set up what goes on each of those tracks right here. And you can have obviously up to six different tracks. So we could have the camera audio, which is my microphone. We can have this background video. Maybe we have music playing in the background and we could set that up on track three and we can have sound effects and everything else that we can set up on completely different tracks. Maybe we're getting alerts, we can set up on a completely different track so that when we're going back and we're mixing this in editing, maybe we don't want the audio for those alerts to come in or maybe the sound effects or maybe we just wanna remove a sound effect here and there. Well, if it's all in one mix, we can't do that. But if they're all on separate tracks, then we can remove whatever we don't want in the final recording and we're good to go. So the sync offset is another thing that you are maybe rarely going to use. And the reason why you're rarely going to use it is because it's very unusual that the audio is going to appear before the video does. In other words, usually what happens is the audio lags behind the video. The only reason why I can think of that the audio would be before the video is because maybe you have some really heavy video processing on. Maybe some sort of a face mask or a heavy LUT or something like that could cause your, your video to lag behind your audio. In which case you can go in here and use the sync offset to delay your audio just a little bit so that it lines up with your video. More often than not, we see the audio lagging behind the video and there are a lot of different reasons why something like that can happen. But usually it's because the microphone is coming in on a USB port, whereas the camera might be coming in through HDMI. HDMI is faster. The USB port takes a little longer to process, in which case you're going to be forced to try to delay your video a little bit so that it lines up with your audio. And that's pretty easy to do. We can basically go out here and we can go into filters on either one of these audio sources. So let's go ahead and assume that maybe we've got some problem with our camera matching up. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go into filters. And so we have a lot of audio video filters that can cause that. We have the compressor, which is going to make the sound a little bit. It's gonna kind of cut off the tops and the bottoms to make sure that even if you don't adjust your levels, you're not going to be super high peaks or anything like that. We can also expand it. So if your audio is just really flat, this can expand out and add a few more highs and lows to your audio. Gain will adjust the volume level of your audio. So if your microphone is super quiet, you can go in here, add some gain to it. Generally speaking, the actual quality of the audio when you do that is not good. But I've seen people do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. Um, you also have noise gate and noise suppression down here. These are some newer features and some people may not even have these features depending upon their audio system on their computer, but they allow you to um, gate out certain amounts of noise or suppress certain amounts of noise so that you can get better quality audio. That has more to do with your room sound than anything else. So if you've got a lot of noise going on outside or you've got people in other rooms of your house making noise, the noise gate or the noise suppression can be good. I've also used this very rarely, but on occasion to block out an air conditioner that I have in my room when it just gets way too hot in the summer to do anything without an air conditioner. So you can use noise gate or noise suppression there to actually do something like that. Now you see at the very bottom here, video delay. And this would be exactly what I'm talking about. Your video's coming and your audio seems like it's slightly delayed after that. Well, the easiest way to fix this is to add a video delay. And what that means is it's gonna add a few milliseconds of delay to your video so it lines up with your audio. So you just select the video delay and you put in the amount of delay. You make sure you're listening so you can see what's going on on screen. And you're monitoring everything. You get it lined up by adjusting it right here. And once you do, you should be all set. So those are the filters. Now, anytime that you add an audio filter, it is very likely that you're going to add a bit of actual delay to your audio because that takes time to process. 
and that's where that V-Sync video delay is going to come in handy because you're going to have to delay your video just a little bit so it lines up with that audio that you're using processing on. That's why I don't use any processing or anything on my audio. I try to keep it as simple as possible. So now you kind of know everything that you need to know about the audio mixer and how the basic audio works in OBS so that you can transform your sound or at least understand what the changes that you're making actually mean for the audio that you're getting. At the end of the day, if it sounds good to you, well, your audience is going to tell you if you're full of crap or your ears aren't working right. But other than that, once it sounds good to you, you need to stop. Because there's nothing more difficult or frustrating than trying to hunt down audio problems in the middle of a live stream or when you just want to record a video. Now, I hope you're in a better place with your OBS audio after watching this video. But if I miss something and you're still struggling, let me know about it in the comments. And if you want to see the plugins that I never live stream without, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one.